Again, to Youthology Live Sunday nights, it is episode number four. And what's going on tonight is all Q&A. So I've received some uh, direct messages throughout the day, and um, we're gonna run with those uh, exciting stuff uh, tonight. So thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. And uh, share this with somebody uh, this week. We'll take the content and we'll make the content uh, much more uh, practical. The content will be put up on the website uh, in, the, in the blog at youthology.com, so you can follow it there, okay? So, uh, question number one tonight, I need more volunteers. You see that? I need more volunteers. Hopefully you can catch that, all right? The, uh, the, the message tonight, this first question, is really driven uh, by leaders who have struggled to not just recruit youth leaders, but to, to retain youth leaders. Recruiting is one thing, retention is another, right? So one of the things I want to stress with this question of I need more volunteers is, I want you to think of this. Healthy leaders attract other healthy leaders, okay? Healthy leaders attract other healthy leaders. It's a principle in, uh, in the marketplace, it's a principle in ministry. You know, one of the great recruiting tools for gaining more volunteers is healthy leaders that you already have who are involved in the church, who are involved in teens' lives, who are already ministering to parents, right? And they've got this, this, uh, this coin, they have this, uh, this expertise, this relationship with them already. So healthy leaders, is a great way to recruit other leaders. You know, one of the most important principles that I learned early in ministry is that the church is the largest volunteer organization on the planet. Now think about that. The government, they don't use volunteers. Education doesn't necessarily use volunteers. You, you, you look at the private sector, they don't use volunteers, not like the church. The church is the largest volunteer organization on the planet. So if we don't use our volunteers correctly, then we lose them. So think about it this way. Oftentimes I will hear from leaders, hey, you know, I feel like I'm not fitting in. I feel like I'm, you're not using me to my capabilities, right? Placement is very important. I mean, you can do skill uh, competency and skill development with your leaders and you can do leadership training with your leaders in your leadership meetings. But if the training, hear me, if the training isn't specific to their niche or to their type of gift, then you have them working or functioning outside of the, the, their success, right? When they wake up, they don't wanna do something that they don't love. People wanna do something they love. So skill competency and training is important, but skill placement is really probably even more important for longevity because most people won't quit as volunteers if they're used in the right positions, right? So uh, think that through. The second question that we have that came out tonight is, uh, uh, and this is from a student, my family is messed up, right? My family is messed up. How can I get help? You know, one thing that I have said for a while now in youth ministry is that we are not just raising a fatherless generation anymore. We, we can't use that excuse. We are raising a fatherless, a motherless, and a siblingless generation. Most students, most students don't have a family unit intact, right? I mean, if you look at the amount of students that are in your youth ministry, your youth organization, the family unit has been disintegrated. It's been disintegrated by the government. It's been, been disintegrated by uh, the church in many ways. We've separated them. And this loss of family is being, is being felt even in the church, okay? So when a student says, my family is messed up, how can I get help? If they can't find help in the church, where can they find help, right? And I believe that it is, it is the, one of the main responsibilities of youth leaders is to model our uh, family unit, that family structure within our leadership teams, right? We can't be surrogates 
every teenager needs to solve that relationship with mom and with dad. And so, you know, I hear often, man, I wish you were my, right? And maybe as a youth leader, you've heard a student say, man, I wish I, I don't want to go home. I wish I could just, can I go home and be with you? Would you, can I live with your family? I mean, it's all great. And we understand what they're saying, but we can't be surrogates or replacements in that setting. We have to drive students back to their family unit. E even if it's disintegrated, and even if it's not healthy, they have to solve that at some point, right? So we can help by modeling uh, healthy families. We can help by speaking into their homes. One of the things that really increases family ministry as a youth leader is to have regular parent, parent meetings, right? That, that might be individual meetings that you would have throughout the year. That would be maybe a once a year parents banquet, right? That might be uh, making sure that the parents understand where they can find all the social media for the youth ministry so they can figure out what's going on and all that, right? Um, give them your phone number. Give parents your phone number so they can reach out to you if they do need it. But we have to resource the students from the church by showing them a, a healthy family unit. And then we also have to resource the students by sending them back into their homes and they've got to get healing there too, right? So that we can kind of counter the culture of broken families today that, that students are being raised, raised in, right? Uh, this is one of my favorites that came in also. I, I guess we have four or five questions. I've grabbed three. This one here is, why am I not consistent? How come I'm not consistent? What is it that keeps me from being consistent? I, I, I read this, it was from a, a young man, and uh, he started out, this is, this is the way it started out. The question started out, I'm not reading my Bible. I'm not praying. I'm hanging around the wrong friends, and I don't know why it doesn't feel like camp anymore, <laughs> right? I just simply uh, texted back, and I, I DM'd him back, and I said, you know, you really answered your own question. Why am I not consistent? Spiritual discipline, spiritual disciplines equate to spiritual maturity, okay? And I don't know what our youth ministries are doing, right? I think many of you understand uh, uh, the importance of the word, the importance of worship, the importance of prayer. We say all the time things like this. I, I hear this all the time at conferences. I hear, I hear it in um, preaching sessions. I hear it in conversations in my coaching sessions. I hear youth leaders be like, man, I've been, I've been telling our kids they have to pray. Or I've been telling our kids they have to read, read the Bible. I've been telling our kids they gotta share their faith. But if we don't show them how to do that, what good is that, right? They, they already know they need to. So instead of as leaders trying to inspire them to do that, we have to instruct them to do this. Because right there, in that one statement that was sent, I'm not reading my Bible, I'm not praying, I'm hanging around the wrong friends, I don't know why it's not like camp anymore. Well, each of those disciplines, each of those individual disciplines, and many more, the disciplines of prayer, right, are, are, are obvious. But what about fasting and giving? Um, what about simplicity, right? So when I, when I think of that question that came in, how come I'm not consistent? Each of us know that spiritual disciplines are what leads us to spiritual maturity. And so in the blog on Tuesday, uh, I'll hit it on the website. It'll, it'll be there if you go to the website, do the drop down to the blog area. I wanna give uh, students and leaders also 10, 10 uh, ways to become spiritually healthy. And I'm gonna use the disciplines, okay? So I'm gonna get really practical. Like one of the things that I think we have to stress in youth ministry is theology. We have lost the power of theology, right? Gaga ball versus God, nine square versus the nine fruits of the spirit, you know, or the uh, nine gifts of the spirit. You know, I, I, listen, I like to play too. But if all we do is play and we never get to the pray, then we're not building youth ministry, we're building youth groups, right? So when I get that question, I really wanna challenge youth leaders. Our students are hungrier for the word than you think. And right now the statistics are not good. 
okay, this is a Barnard Research poll, 30% of teenagers, of Christian teenagers in America, can name half of the Ten Commandments. 30% of Christian teenagers in America can name half of the Ten Commandments. I mean, think about that. That is a, that is a, that is some kind of illiteracy. And what we have to do in, the, in youth ministry is to take students to a theological uh, place that they maybe are not going on their own. So we've got to, we've got to take them there on, on our youth study, Wednesday night, Friday night, Sundays, right? Whenever that is. And we have to instruct them, we have to show them how. So placing theology back in the, in the youth service center, in the worship, right? In the preaching, in the speaking, in the teaching, in the small groups and then teaching students on their own how to do spiritual disciplines too. So we dealt with those questions, you know, how do I get more volunteers? And as I said, healthy volunteers will attract other, other volunteers because they want to work on a team that's healthy. And then uh, secondly, um, I, I, I'm not spirit, uh, the second was the family, the family, sorry. Um, my family's falling apart. How can I get help, right? We have to model that as youth leaders in the youth setting, and we also have to point back to the homes and we have to get to the parents and pastor parents too, right? And not just teens, and uh, drive teens back to their homes so they can get healing there. And then finally, the, the spiritual health. I'm not praying, I'm, I'm not reading the word, I'm hanging around with the wrong people, why is this not like camp? Well, you answered your own question, right? Spiritual disciplines equate to spiritual maturity and formation. Right, so from the weight room, right? You know, I thought about this, maybe pounding a few here and whatever, but this is discipline, right? Uh, every athlete knows no pain, no gain. So I'm gonna get back to uh, working out here and uh, pump a little bit. All you gotta do is check out the, the uh, website at youthology.com, go to the blog, and I'm gonna put up the 10 disciplines uh, that create spiritual growth in teenagers. I'm gonna give you 10 practical things and then uh, you'll be able to take those apart and look at them and maybe create a series out of those or whatever, okay? So, uh, God bless you. This was Youthology Live on Sunday nights, live from Orlando in my uh, weight room, right? Uh, my workout room. And uh, this was episode number four, all Q's, Q's and A's. So, uh, this will all be up live. Thank you for joining me. I, I say it every week and I'm gonna say it again. It is an honor that any number of you would show up and give me your time, or you would uh, watch this on uh, YouTube or on the website and catch us there too. So God bless you. I'm out. Have an awesome week.